You were wearing blue. The explosions are nearer this evening. The last train leaves for the south at 6 tomorrow. The announcements will be in a different language. I chew the end of a match. The tips of my finger and thumb are sticky. I will wait at the station and you will send a note. I will read it. It will be raining. Our shadows and the electric light. When I was eight, they taught me real writing to join up the letters. Listen, you said, I prefer to look at the sea. Everything stops there at strange angles. Only the boats spoil it, making you focus further. The third retainer. They would not say the thing. Name the monster, name the monster. Fascination of perspective, trees seen from the train, fog on the hills, iron staircases against red brick with shadows. They left holes in their arguing to drop in communication, a printed circuit he saw it as, a handkerchief caught in a branch waiting for a stronger wind. Three. Smell of shit when I lift him, he knocks the book from my hand, I hold him up, she pulls at my leg, the other comes in with the book, he gives me his book, picks up my book, she pulls his arm, the other is pulling my hair, I put him down, he pulls at my leg, she is taking my book from him and gives it to me, I give him his book, give her an apple, touch the other's hair and open the door, they go down the hall all carrying something. <laughs> You've ruined my evening. You've ruined my life. <laughs> I would be eight people and then the difficulties vanish. Only as one I contain the complications. In a warm house roofed with the ribcage of an elephant, I pass my grey mornings rerunning the reels. And the images are the same, but the emphasis shifts. The actors bow gently to me and I envy them their repeated parts, their constant presence in that world. I will be eight people, each inhabiting the other's dreams, walking through corridors of glass-framed pages, telling each other the final lines of letters, picking fruit in one dream and storing it in another, only as one I contain the complications. And the images are the same, their constant presence in that world. The actors bow gently to me and envy my grey mornings. I would be eight people with the ribcage of an elephant picking fruit in a warm house and our actors bowing, rerunning the reels of my presence in this world. The difficulties vanish and the images are the same. Eight people, glass corridors, page lines repeated. Inhabiting grey mornings roofed with my complications, only as one walking gently storing my dream. Dear sir, flying saucers, flying saucers, Flying saucers. Thrace and Pip. He is taking a glass, but the hand of his shadow touches the door. The day has warmed the pebbles. Now where is this? His passport, his papers, the letter of credit says people are born in high places that empty. There is no imagery to explain this new feeling outside the range of sound and sight. He worries about the other three, packing. Packing, his head turning over the surface, still dreams of the water. Just another whistle stop. Which branch? The bee is filled with the band of the sunshine, a fly. Walked over these lines with its many eyes white, do we persist, the bee? Nothing to the power of language. Nothing up there but the stars across nothing but light, wearying the responses. Nothing between the lights but nothing to focus on. This is the Victorian era, decide now. To put your voice on record, to slide around. This is the equal sign needled into audition. The West. In human luxury, writing this, hidden labour, around the world, capital ends in electricity. The North American skull is being restructured around perfect teeth, although a quarter of the world's teeth are Chinese. <laughs> 
English opium. Lightly the poppy petals cling, flattening to spurts of wind. Some stalks are hairy, droplets of bitter white turn milky coffee in the spoon. In sunlight, shades and reflections gently shape themselves. Daily the ball grows dark and sticky to cinder larger when its breath bubbles to mix with mine. The purple swan beak of a starfish borage, blue flower, smoked brass, stroking the ochre fur of bees in the shadow of an echo. These were some, in the middle of the age, they were stuck in 40 lines for two or three years. Name unknown. Bare space with neither flower nor picture, sunlight glows through the half-empty peanut butter jar. The mixture cools into the room's reality. Gravedigger's increased productivity may not be good for all. Independent of measuring devices, monoliths eventually topple across a system of crystalline forms. A cat blinks in the dust of a passing bus. Under headlines, managed by the presenter, outer armour produced in darkness fades. A thin, super-cold atmosphere separates metal from its ores. Gradually, the soil becomes infertile. Its fictional world explained or defined to show measurable changes, combined with something outside themselves, still energetic enough, ancillary backgrounds throng, for only in a vacuum does light invariably win. Also, the use of an image must go into the open of silent films, buttoned tight to keep the secret of his alter ego carefully patted into shape. In the twilight, concealed wires play moving slightly in the breeze, whose slanting motion tracks his head made of rubber hung on a branch of a tree, smiling down upon the scene, unfolding towards the west. Yet to be born at the moment, I'm troubled with systematic speculation, constructing special instruments to see things close up. The road is open, leading to a sense of volume, rich yet sparsely defined, always growing and deviating towards primary colours, conscious of intensification in the narrow corridors of the modern. This direction will have time to name itself, marked with a drip of wax. In that logical order, bizarre scandals precipitate about his greatest interests. Farewell to the beach, bright water lilies sagging, perhaps ruined by jealousy. More a complex work of art announcing to the world various causes of ideas, unsung by constant nagging. Gradually she calms down to salvage from the fire, vitality overcome by emotion converging on catastrophe. A sense of being deserted, emerging just to be good on their shoulders, scattered throughout spacious influence, reveals their pathetic character measured against external wooden fire escapes. A neurosis about ability running to be discarded before curtain time. Too many facts assume a parody of none, substituted for the original by fertility of imagination. Somehow, admitted from the shadows, echoing eyes pierce the defence of compassion as a musical instrument among genuine monsters purifies awareness into a tranquil habit to spoil this fine work. Condition is imperceptive, hope for an elegant event slow to understand the surface should be loose, a pastel colour plan dropped from the seasons. Tear away whole sections of what is good, bags of camel's hair, a blue that carries further, the unlikeness of dusk and chaos. Crossing a stream where tributaries enter a river, you can't wait for science to drain that space of wet earth dry. The face seems to lack contour. Nothing is left but a vast expanse, deep grooves of habit trodden into the soil under a full moon crossed by a vulture. Exhausted by their experiences, his body spreads, disease, rumour, spiced with a touch of grace. A crackle of wood burning sweeps the whole scene, getting dark in the east where no sound enters. Notice the wires are pulled by no splendour, imagery or power. Vision does more than see the habit of infinite parenthesis, changes of fashion stumbling forever over the plains of time. This was a poem written at the request of Steve Lacey, who wanted to set something for a mutual friend of ours who died. So this is a poem for after the death of Frank of Beltrami. Out of a sudden, leave us Sunday, 30th August 1995. The alphabet wonders what it should do. Paper feels useless, colours lose hue, while all musical notes perform only in blue. 
A Lombardy poplar shallows the ground, drifted with swans down, muffling the sound at the tip of the lake of the road to the south. Above, in the night sky, scattered by chance, stars cease their motion. Poppies don't dance in the grass, standing still by the path no one walks. Close the loop on this. Not enough boots on the ground to square the circle. It's a paradigm shift. We need to get our heads around. We need to analyse the perfect storm to put lipstick on this pig at the end of the day. Put a stake in the ground of our core competency. Hope is not a strategy to move the needle. This time it's different because the next big thing is the elephant in the room comparing apples to apples. This was, well, you probably remember Sarah Palin, so it's a long way back. <laughs> Astride the palindrome. Listen, my children, and you shall hear of the midnight flight of Paul Revere. Put the bell in the crypt and muffle its ring, and douse the lights if you see the king, one in the hand and two in a tree, for we fight for oil and dentistry, and anything else that rhymes with three, like tea and me and philosophy, the study of love and Greek pastry. Thus he warned the British and raised the alarm, and kittens and children came to no harm, so we can salute the flag and wave it, unafraid to destroy freedom to save it. <laughs> this is just a found poem. New EU plan to stop banks failing. BBC News. Queen humbled by Jubilee events. <laughs> Venus makes rare trek across sun. Exercise. No help for depression. More body parts found in Canada. <laughs> Local news, Sussex. Air ambulance crew receive medals. Jubilee beacons are set alight. Leisure centre upgrade completed. So this last one was the Department of Homeland Security. Somebody asked them to, Freedom of Information, I suppose, to release the keywords and phrases they use to track through social media and so on for threats and <coughs> things against the country. So it seemed obvious to like, replace. This is a piece called Spear Shaking. Now is the power center of our weapons cache made toxic jihad by this breach of threat. And all the deaths that worm upon our watch in the deep border of the cartel buried. Now our airports cancelled with environmental terrorists our NATO banners harp for magnitude, our social media changed to agro-terror, our first responders to domain awareness. Industrial spill has smoothed national preparedness, and now, instead of national infrastructure to fright the waves of cyber security, it capers nimbly in denial of service to the hemorrhagic fever of a riot. But I, but I am not pork for public health, nor made to aid disaster management, either and rudely burst and want assassination to struck before a sick suspicious substance, I that am curtailed of this emergency broadcast, cheated of shots fired by illegal immigrants, cancelled, militia sent before my dock into this subway grid with this half blacked out, and that's so avian and enriched that swine infection pirate salmonella. Why I, in this new federation body scanner, have no cocaine to pass away the cloud unless to burn my mutations in the storm and descant on mine own service disruption. And therefore, since I cannot drug a scammer to entertain these consular earthquakes, I am locked down to ammonium nitrate and strain the violence of delays. Threats of allayed pandemic symptoms by Trojan earthquakes, hurricanes and hail to set Hezbollah, Hamas and Yemen in deadly hate the one against the other. And if La Familia be as nuclear a threat as I am, blister agent anthrax, this day should evacuation looting be recalled about a drug cartel which says that meth of target